Welcome to the Signature Sip Podcast, a real estate podcast with myself, John Steingraber, and my beautiful wife, Michelle Pice. Cheers to the beginning of Signature Sip. I feel like now we're back and we have a lot to give. We have a lot to offer. Till this day, by the way, I have to say, the excitement happens the second I land the deal, not when I get paid. It's the art of the deal, it's landing that up. Right, it's the chase. Not only are we going to be giving a lot of wisdom and knowledge and experiences and stories, but we're going to bring on guests. I bartended, babe. So something that you and I have in common, even though... Babe, you bartended for how long? Three months. A day or two? I... Okay, it's a podcast. <laughs> so you were like eating a tosta mista in Emily's Bakery. Um, I think I was having a pastel de nata. Okay, pastel de nata. <laughs> and a galon. And if you're a realtor, if you're an investor, you're going to want to subscribe to this podcast. All right, welcome back to Signature Sip with John and Michelle, our real estate show. Today, we're going to talk about a very hot topic for primarily real estate agents, right? So if you're an agent, you're definitely going to want to listen to this. And guys, if you haven't um, subscribed to our YouTube or follow us on Instagram, check us out. Uh, we have uh, multiple podcasts that we already put up, uh, branding and marketing. Uh, we also interviewed our uh, executive producer for our 24 hour flip TV show. And today's hot topic is going to be the lawsuit. Everybody is talking about the lawsuit. I mean, a lot of people are very uneducated about the lawsuit, but you actually read. I read a lot about the lawsuit. A so there, there's it. a lot of lawsuits. So the one specifically yeah. that we're going to talk about is the Sitzer Burnett one, the one that um, they awarded like over $5 billion in damages, which will be appealed by the National Association of Realtors. So for those of you that are unaware what's going on with that lawsuit and other other lawsuits have been filed since, uh, kind of in the real estate world, is the plaintiffs are basically sellers, primarily sellers that sold their home during a certain period of time uh, in Kansas and Missouri. And basically what happened was... Um, you know, this person sold their house. They were upset about paying uh, the listing side of the commission to the listing agent and then also having to pay the buyer's agent a commission, right? And when they listed the house, it was all, you know, written out and they agreed to that and everything was good. But after the fact, they were upset that they paid the buyer's agent side because they said, wait a second, why am I paying somebody that's not representing my interest, right? They negotiated the price down, right? Which they accepted that offer and they didn't feel like they should have to pay the buyer side of the commission. So uh, they filed a lawsuit. It eventually turned into a class action lawsuit, you know, with multiple parties, you know, um, tons of sellers. Uh, and they're basically claiming that MLSs, the National Association of Realtors, um, some MLSs that were named in the lawsuit, and real estate brokerages are all colluding to keep commissions high. And in this case, they're saying that the sellers paid for that commission for agents that were representing buyers. So that's basically the essence of the lawsuit. And they lost. The verdict was guilty, you know, uh, for all these things. And they awarded uh, over $5 billion because it's it's um, treble damages, which is three times. I think it was like $1.7 billion times three. Uh, so yeah, we're going to talk about it today and break a couple things down. We'll give you our opinion of the lawsuit. We'll give you our opinion of kind of what we think the changes will be moving forward. And I think the main thing just on a macro level is to understand that number one, changes are happening now, so we need to be aware of them. Not huge changes, we'll talk about them. But number two, you know, this, um, at the end of the day, you know, businesses evolve, right? Industries evolve. And, you know, whatever changes come out of this, you know, that's gonna be fine, right? Everybody's gonna be able to continue to do business. You just might have a couple different forms. You might have to have a couple different conversations with people. More disclosure. Yeah, you know, more transparency right. around your conversations with buyers and sellers. But um, overall, what do you think about, like, just, you know, I'll start with you. The idea of the pros and cons of the seller, you know, basically making the arrangement with the listing agent, right? And saying, all right, we're going to 
pay you on the listing side X percent commission. And then we're going to offer out money to the buyer's agent. Why does that happen? Why don't they just have buyers pay the buyer's agent a commission? Why do we do that? And does it help or hurt the seller and the buyer? It helps the seller tremendously um, because at the end of the day, they want to get top dollar for their home. So we always try to offer out or we encourage the seller to offer out a competitive um, split. In commission rate. Commission rate split. To incentivize um, to buyer's agents. To incentivize the buyer's agents, right? Um, but why is it? But to, why uh, does the listing agent under, do that? What do you mean? Why does why, the listing agent do that? So why does the listing agent? Why does the listing agent negotiate the buyer's side of the commission? Well, the listing agent should not be negotiating the buyer's side of the commission. This is a conversation that you always have, that you should be always having with the seller. This is this is what my fee is, right? On the listing side. On the listing side. What would you like to offer the buy side, right? So you should go in and educate the seller of how this works, right? And if you're not doing a good job, then I can understand where people are just confused. Right. Um, I do think... Because if somebody asks you, you know, what do you charge for your commission for right. your services to list my property and sell it for top dollar, somebody might say X percent, right? Without kind of getting into the actual commission amounts, right. you might say X percent, right. like as a total number. And then the way that that total number gets split mm -hmm. up is the listing side, the listing agent, my firm will get this piece. Right. And then we're going to take half of that or a piece of that. And we're going to offer it as an incentive for buyers agents to come and bring their buyers. And that way they know how much they're getting compensated for bringing those buyers. Right. And this is something that's clearly stated on the listing agreement. So it should be of no surprise. Well, in New Jersey it is. I don't, right. I don't know listing agreements like nationwide. Right. I don't know what they look like, but I would That's imagine that they break it all down. It, I would it, imagine. Right. So there's full transparency there. Right. And actually there's in the listing agreement, there's a couple of, of places where you'd actually have to write it and then rewrite it. So it's there. Transparency is there. I know as a listing agent, when I, when I'm sitting in front of a seller, you know, oftentimes in a, in a, not in a seller's market, in a normal market. Okay. Um, I have sellers asking to, um, to incentivize the buyer's agent with bonuses, right? I'd like to give them X, but I also want to incentivize them with, you know, an additional X amount of dollars, um, if they bring me an offer by so-and-so date. Right. So I think that, um, I think everything was fine the way it is, uh, or, you know, I mean, obviously I, I, I'm, I agree with transparency. There should be a lot more transparency in the business. I'm going to give you a very clear example. Take an average buyer, $500,000. They come into a brokerage or they, 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 they contact um, an agent and they'd like to see their budget is $500,000. There's maybe 10 homes within that price range in the areas that they're looking at. If there's not an incentive for that buyer's agent to bring the buyer, who do you think what do you think the buyer's agent's going to do? They're going to steer that buyer into a different direction. I'm not saying that's right for them to do. Right, but they're not supposed to do that. They're not supposed to do that. Steering is illegal. You're not supposed to be doing that. But that's exactly what's going to happen. So the seller is going to um, suffer because now uh, some agents will boycott that listing. They will not show it. And we see it still all the time with discount brokerages. You have people offering out you know, a very well, low commission and you, you are seeing agents boycott that, not showing it. And I've, I've had situations where, you know... Um, well, I mean, let's just use the, the real examples, right, real quick. Right now, in the marketplace, you have a choice, right? If you're, a listing, if you're listing your home for sale or you're deciding to sell it, what are your choices, right? You have all different types of brokerages at all different commissions accounts. Right all different commission amounts and you can also list for sale by owner. There exactly. is no law that says absolutely you have to do it. Like I'm an LLC and I go to evict somebody on a property that I own. Guess what the law is? I have to hire an attorney, mm -hmm. but I don't have a choice. I have to hire an attorney. That's what they tell me. If I go to court without an attorney, having the company owned in an LLC, I cannot evict that tenant. I need to hire an attorney. Mm -hmm. It's the law. That's not how it is when you're selling your home. You can sell your home for sale by owner. So what are the stats when real estate agents are not involved? Well, if you look at the National Association reports, um, they, they study this and they put all the, only 11% of for sale by owners are, end up selling for sale by owner. The rest of them 
They end up listing with the realtor. They end up listing with the realtor. Of course. And then they show the difference between, and by the way, a lot of for sale by owners, I think it's 49 or 50% actually know the person that they sold the home to. That's why they didn't list with a realtor. Mm -hmm. So out of the people that actually succeed, over half of them, they already had the buyer. They already knew the buyer. Maybe the neighbor approached them. Maybe they sold it to their son or their grandson or this person or your granddaughter. And they knew that person and they want to sell it to somebody that they know. So why would they need a realtor for that, mm-hmm. right? They could just get the title companies and, you know, maybe have somebody draft the contract for them. Right. So right there. And then the difference between how big of a discrepancy there is between listing your home for sale by owner and listing your house with a realtor. The discrepancy is crazy. Yeah, of course. Right? It's not, it's not. 5%, it's not 6%, it's not 7%, it's way higher than that. Yes, well, because as an agent, as a listing agent, our job is to make sure that we we advertise the home, we market the home, and we do it to the best of our ability, and we have the resources and the knowledge and the know-how and the capital that we put behind every listing to make sure that we get as many eyes on that listing as possible. You are very limited when you do it for sale by own. You put a sign on the ground. Yes, and I tell people all the day, you, you maybe you don't need me to sell your house. In today's market, you don't need me. You right. can put a for sale by owner sign right, outside. You'll sell it. Will you sell it? Absolutely. But will you be leaving money on the table? And the answer is yes, always. You will leave money on the table because you do not have the... Um, exposure. Exposure that we bring to the table. So if you think you're saving money on commission you're it's actually costing you i had a situation yesterday where someone called me it was a referral for a two million dollar home and before she even interviewed me or wanted me to come to the house she says to me i want to know what you charge i said my response was i haven't even seen your home she said i had a broker that will do it for x um, and if you can't match that then don't even bother coming over and i said to her that's what i said to her i said you're actually losing money um, by, by doing it. And she's like very confused. She goes, how am I losing money? I'm saving money. I'm like, no, you're losing money. You're losing money because there's just no way that someone can take on X and be able to offer you all the services that a full service brokerage will do. You just can't do it. I mean, I know what it costs. I know what it costs to no, some effectively people, market you, a home. But, I know what it costs. I know. But babe, you can't, some people can do it and they're willing to make less money. And there's nothing wrong with that. There's, there's roofers that are out there that are like, okay, if I make a thousand dollar margin on a roof and I do a hundred roofs a year and I make a hundred thousand dollars, I'm fine with that. There is people that are willing to do things for less. Okay. It doesn't mean that they're going to end up a hundred percent with less money, but I think the conversation should be about if it's only about commission, then it's assuming that this is a commodity right? It's like one pair of shoes versus another pair of shoes. That's, that's, this pair of shoes is exactly like this pair of shoes. Well, guess what? Michelle Pice and that realtor is, I can guarantee not the same person. Yes, but and I- you don't do the same exact thing. So the conversation that people need to understand is number one, prices are not created equal because realtors are not created equal and the services that they provide are not created equal, right? You, you probably, the chances of you having a better track record in home sales, in above list price sold, in sell price to list price to sell price ratio is way better than whoever they're sitting with. Right, but I, right? I'm going to go back and I'm going to disagree with that comment that you made because the, the commission that she had offered out or a to- was a total. And so unless the listing agent is willing to work for free, um, well, then... Well, yeah, you're saying that they're not spending money on the things that I would be spending money on at that rate. They're, it, it's impossible. They're not spending right. it. And, there's no, and then the offering is so low mm-hmm. that who is going to be incentivized to sell it? unless the listing agent finds their own buyer. But in essence, I mean, what is the likelihood of a listing agent finding their own buyer. And again, why do you need a listing agent to find a buyer? You might as well do a buy owner because the goal to list a home with somebody is to be able to expose and to try to get multiple buyers. That's the goal here, not just finding a buyer. But it's a lot more than that. It's prepping There's the house. so much that it's goes involved. It's pricing strategy. It's negotiation. Yeah. Anyway, we're getting we're getting a little off track, right? Because we want to talk about the law. I'm very passionate about this conversation. We know why people list properties. Now it's not a matter of why should they hire a listing agent? That's not what we're talking about, Mm -hmm. right? The the lawsuit is not about 
actually all the people were happy with the real estate agent and 99% of them, I think were happy with the outcome. Right. No, the but lawsuit is based upon, do you think that the seller should be paying the buyer, the side. buyer side of the commission? And in but my why opinion, does that happen? Well, it happens because let's face it, buyers, right? Especially if they're first time home buyers, they're scraping up as much money as they have. They're saving up as much money as they have to buy their first home. So there's costs associated with the purchase, right? You have um, down payment, down payments. You have appraisals, closing costs. closing costs. I mean, there's there's fees associated with that. And if you tack on having to pay a buyer's agent. Uh, in addition to that, m most people are not going to be able to afford it. So what's going to happen is they're going to have to find a house that's less money, right? Or they're going to end up making an offer to the seller for a lot less just to be able to cover now the, um, the cost of the buyer's side of the commission. Or what's going to happen, which is exactly what I think is going to happen, is they're going to somehow roll in that cost within their loan. So now that we have to worry about the house appraising, Right. Right, because it's almost it's like a, a higher price. A higher price, so it's like but a it's not, But it's not really a higher price if it's already if the seller's paying for it, right? Okay, if the sell, I, I'm listing my house. Okay, I talk with the realtor and I go, I want four hundred thousand for the house. Okay, that's what I want. They go, what are you charging commission? And they say X, and they go, okay, well that's less than what I wanted to net, right? So all right, let's price it at four ten, four fifteen, right? So we still have the same issue. We still have to appraise that house. If an offer comes in at 415, the house still needs to appraise and the commission's being paid from the proceeds of the sale. It's already in, it's already in the price. Right. No, I, so I, it's the same thing. No, but we, we okay. But if, there, if it comes, if the issue is the buyer is having to now come out of pocket, they have to come out of pocket. But even if they roll that fee within the closing costs, it's still going, they're still now financing it over 20, 30 years. It's still, it's still an expense to them. Right. Which. Right. But our house, here's the question, right? If, and this is funny that I don't know if it came up, I wasn't in the courtroom, but those sellers, you know, assuming if you would have not offered any money, you would have just offered 0%, right? To the buyer's agent as the seller, right? Would you have gotten the same amount? No, I don't think so. I personally don't. You don't know? No, you don't I, know. You don't know. I can't, but say, that's, I can't but that's speak the in question. absolutes because I don't know. However, I just know- Every market's different too. It, yes, and in, I'm in the trenches. This is what I do day in, day out. I see agents not show certain things because of the fee that they're being offered out. I've seen it. I witnessed it. I've heard it. No, I know, but right? if it changes as an industry, if right? If it changes as an Let, industry. Let's say there's some listings on the MLS that are offering X percent, right? Which let's just say agents are willing to work for that. And then there's some that offer 0%. Right. We had a scenario at Signature Realty that the seller was adamant. Right. After all this happened, the seller was adamant. They're like, I'm not going to offer any commission out at all. And we we're like, OK, you know, no problem. Like if you don't want to offer a commission out, that's totally fine. That is your option. Right. They said we want the buyer's agent um, to we want the buyer to pay for it. We're like, fine. So we got eight offers, seven out of eight offers put in an offer asking for the seller to pay for the commission. Of course they did. And guess which one got accepted? The one... The highest offer. The highest Because offer. at the end of the day, you just compare them yeah. and then you, you just take the net. Right. You're like, okay, well, on this one, I'm paying X percent commission. So what am I left with? On this one, they're, you know, the buyers is paying the commission, but what am I left with? Because at the end of the day, that's all that matters, right? What are you left with? And guess what ended up happening? They accepted a high, a, a, a nice offer. It was a good offer, right? Because we're in a seller's market, at least in this geographic area at this time. And it was over asking price. And the seller ended up paying 3% to the buyer's agent because that's what the offer said. Mm -hmm. So even though they offered out zero, they ended up paying for They it. ended up paying three. Right. And what's interesting about that is if they would have offered two and a half, would they have still gotten that offer? Probably. Probably. So the seller ended up paying more. More. The, uh, right. In and that specific case, that's a good example of like in a seller's market, if you offer 0% out to buyer's agents, what are they going to do? They're going to just ask for the seller to pay for it anyway. And that's exactly what's going to happen. So in reality, what's really changing? The seller is still going to is still going to end up paying the commission one way or the other. If well, you think what's, about what's it. changing because is the seller loses, see... the seller also loses a little bit of control on how much commission is, that is correct. being set. And that's a very valid point. Right. It's a very valid because point. Because if, if I'm a flipper right. and I buy a house and I fix it up and then I go to sell it, 
in my opinion, right now, the way the industry works, I think it's very efficient from that perspective, right? The buyer's agent knows how much the commission is going to be for compensation, right? So that makes sense to me that they know. The listing, the, the seller knows how much the commission is going to be total, right? And they make all their decisions around how much the listing side is and then how much the buyer side is, right? So everybody understands it. The only people that are kind of confused, in my opinion, are buyers, right? They're like, okay, I have a buyer's agent. Right. Like, am I paying you? Is somebody else paying you? And you're not allowed to say you're not paying for that because the buyer is kind of paying for it in the sense because they're paying for a house, they're buying a house, and the, the commission, right, is kind of built into the sale because there's a total commission there and the seller's taking that into consideration. Just like they're taking into consideration the realty transfer tax. When you sell a house, you have that, just like they're taking into consideration their attorney fee, right? Or any other fees that they have to pay at closing, they're taking those into consideration when they're deciding to sell their house. The commission is just one more, right, expense that they're gonna have. Now, if they don't wanna pay that, there's options for them, right? You can list the house right now, right, for, X percent on the listing side and then offer out zero, right? You can offer out whatever you want, right? You can offer higher or lower. Now in this marketplace, if I'm flipping a house, what would I do? I would pay the commission on the seller side. Why? Because I don't have the friction and I don't have buyers worried about, oh, I might have to pay the commission if they don't agree, right? Just like if you offer a seller's concession, you know, the, the owner could be like, look, I don't agree to the seller's concession, Right. Just like if an agent and puts in an happened. offer, and yeah, and happened. if an agent puts in an offer and goes, I want my through, you know, my X percent commission built into the deal, right? And I want the seller to pay for it. They have to just look at their net and decide if they're going to do it. But what if they say no? If they say no, now the buyer's agent's going back to the client going, hey, they, they want to accept your offer, but they don't want to pay the, the commission, right? And, and let's just, for example purposes, say it's, I don't know. $15,000, right? If it's $15,000, well, if you made an offer for four fifteen, dollars right? And now the commission that the buyer has to pay is $15,000. Now they're paying $430,000. So they might say, well, okay, if I have to pay the commission, I'll only pay four, right? I'll only pay four. If I was going to pay four fifteen, dollars and they were going to pay X percent commission, well, now on my side, I need to, I need to pay less because that's equivalent to anything else. It's the same exact thing as making an offer and say, hey, I need you to put in appliances, right? And those appliances are five grand. My offer is based on that term of the appliances being paid for, new appliances being paid for. And let's say that was $5,000. Well, and, and they counter back and go, okay, no, we don't want to pay for the appliances. Yeah, but you're missing the point in the sense that now that bu now in that same scenario, that buyer says, you know what, then if it's $15,000, no, we're, then we're going to offer you four. But how is that buyer's agent getting paid? Well, they'll, well, that's what I'm saying. They're paying them. They're paying their broker. They're saying we'll pay. We want four fifteen total. That's what we can qualify for, right? So my offer is four fifteen. Right, but most. But, and then yeah. the seller goes, "I'll accept four fifteen, but I'm not paying the commission." Right. Okay, well then my counter is four hundred, and I'll pay my broker. Yeah, but most people are, don't are not, especially in, the, in that scenario. They're, they're not going to have fifteen thousand. But listen, but listen, they were willing to pay for four 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 fifteen for it. Right, but the, right. So the way to handle that, that will, I'm yeah. just saying, I'm just using example. Yeah. Right, examples like. How is the seller making more money? They're not. Right. In that case, the They're buyer not. is going to make a decision and say, okay, well, you basically just countered me at $15,000 more. It would be equivalent to them saying, no, I want four thirty, and I'll pay the 15. It's the, same thing. It's it's the a, same thing. It's, it's baked into thing. the deal. Now let's talk about the actual lawsuit, mm -hmm. right? There's four things that people I think don't understand about the lawsuit. Okay. There's a lot of clowns and I'm going to call them clowns because it upsets me. We're a very professional industry, right? Real estate agents, right? The majority of the agents that I meet, right? Especially agents that we take on at Signature Realty, they want to serve people. They want to help people. We're a professional industry. And then you have people that are acting like clowns, right? They're making fun of everybody, right? They're, they're, they're making stupid statements and they're making the actual licensed professional realtor look like an idiot. Right. Because and that's why a lot of people are like, oh, salespeople are this, salespeople are that. It's because you, you have a small few, a small percentage of people that make that represent because they're louder than everybody else. And then everybody looks at them and go, oh, that's a real. Yeah, that's what a realtor is. Right. And that's not what a realtor is. Right. Most realtors are professional. Right. And 
Obviously, there's a lot of bad apples out there and some of them are nasty and blah, blah, blah. But overall, right, we have 400 and something agents at Signature Realty. I would say 99% of them are, you know, the top notch. They, they're professional. They want to learn. They're always getting educated. They're always getting training and they really want to serve people and they want to help people. So here are the four things. Number one, right, they named NAR. Why'd they name NAR? They're the largest trade organization in New Jersey, uh, in, in the United States, right? They have one and a half million real estate agents as members of the National Association of Realtors. They pay dues to be part of that membership and they have to follow a code of ethics. And that makes them go from real estate agent to also be allowed to call themselves realtors, right? That's the difference between a real estate agent and a realtor. They're members of the National Association of Realtors and they have a code of ethics that they follow right? There's specific things that they have to follow. Okay. And treat each other a certain way, treat clients a certain way, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Well, they have, by being a member of NAR, they have rules that you have to follow, right? On top of code of ethics. And one of them is the adversary commission rule. So if you list a house, right, you're offering this blanket commission out to people to cooperate. Why? Because, you know, when you list the house, right, the assumption is that we're all cooperating. We're all at different real estate brokerages, even within a brokerage, right? You have some of the big brokers that have 10, 20, 30, 50,000 agents, right? If you're representing a seller, right, and you're, you've negotiated the listing side of the commission, they're saying, well, we want you to also offer out for buyer's agents to come, right, and, and tell everybody what they're going to be compensated, right? So offer that out when you're on the MLS, Okay, great. That's called the adversary commission rule. That's number one, right? Number two um, is the MLSs. When you go to submit a listing, they have a requirement to put a buyer's broker compensation on the ones that were named in the lawsuit, not all of them, right? And most of them are board-owned MLSs, right? They're owned by this organization. NAR are one of the local boards or the state board. And in their rules, they say, okay, when a listing agent goes to list a house, right? Under the buyer's broker submission, this is the, the, the member side of the MLS, right? When we go to submit all the information to get the property on the MLS, it says you have to offer a buyer's compensation, right? You can't put zero on, on these MLSs specifically, which that's changing now. So, but you could put one cent or you can put a dollar, right? But the plaintiffs are making the case that, okay, NAR has this rule that everybody's got to offer commission out, Right. And then the MLSs that are a lot of times owned by these organizations or owned by brokers or agents that sit on the boards of the local boards and the MLS, they're, they have this rule. So they're basically saying that we have to offer compensation. We can't not offer compensation. Right. And then there's the third piece of it where brokers set their minimum guidelines where they say, hey, we're not going to be this. We're, we're not going to take on any listings under this commission, right? So if you have a hundred agents and you say, listen, our company policy is you cannot, um, you cannot take a listing for less than this percent commission. You can negotiate, but you can't take it for any less than this. And if you are, and if you are, okay, we, you have to run it by us, right? Cause it might be a client that's giving you five listings. Well, that's different, right? You know, we could do kind of a bulk discount, Right. So it's negotiable, but there's some guidelines, right? You can't, we're not a flat fee broker where you, you get paid 500 bucks and we list it on them less. We don't do that. Right. Because that has to do with goodwill. It has to do with brand. It has a, a lot to do with everything. Right. And that's the guidelines. And they're saying, well, there's all these big brokers that have a huge percentage of the market share in an area. And if they're all going back and they're all saying, well, you can't list for less than X. Right. And they're sitting also, agents from those brokerages are sitting on the MLS boards. They're sitting on the local boards and NAR and all that stuff. They're, they're basically saying that all these people are colluding, right? They're all trying to keep the prices for commissions high, right? Not really giving any credit to the efficiency of the system and how it works and how it actually benefits sellers from getting higher dollars. And it also benefits buyers by not having to pay that money out of pocket. What their argument is, and those are the three things I'll, I'll share the fourth in a minute. Their argument is, yeah, but the buyer side of the commission is artificially being held high, right? Because of all these rules. And then on the buyer side, if you think about it, the buyer's agents representing the buyer, right? Mm -hmm. Right. They're responsible for what? Trying to get them the best deal, et cetera. But they're saying now that you're getting compensated by the other side, right? It's like you're kind of getting paid by the listing agent, mm -hmm. right? So there's, they're saying there could be some collusion going on. And there, I understand right? that. Right. I can understand And that. not only that, the buyer, 
right, themselves, it's already built into the sale, right? That commission, because the seller took it into consideration, like, well, I got to pay X percent commission. And then the buyer doesn't get an opportunity to negotiate that number mm -hmm. with the buyer's agent. No, they don't. Right. So if they have a buyer's agency agreement, they can say, listen, regardless of what I'm being offered, our deal that we're negotiating is X percent. Right. So if they're offering zero, we've already agreed to a number. If they're offering more, I can give you a rebate. But here's the fourth thing. They have an anti rebate law in those states. So in 10 states of the United States, they have the anti rebate law, which doesn't allow you to give back any money to the buyer. It's illegal to do that. In New Jersey, it's not, right? We do have a rebate law where you can say, hey, listen, me and you are agreeing to X percent, right? We're negotiating it, right? You want to hire me and I want to work with you, right? I'm going to show you all these homes. I'm committing to you. I'm going to put in my time, my energy, my expertise into you, right? We're going to sit down. We're going to do a buyer's consultation. We're going to figure out what your non-negotiables are. And then we're going to go on this journey of helping you become a homeowner or buying your second home or upgrading or downgrading, whatever, right? And this is the commission that we're agreeing to. Standard practice in the industry is not to do the buyer's agency agreement. Why? Because you don't really have to have that conversation when you go on the MLS and all the commissions are already, they're already kind of set, right? So those are the four things that people don't understand. They're saying that those four things, and along with the brokerages and the MLSs and the boards, they're saying, well, the buyer, you know, doesn't get to negotiate it. And if they did, it would be lower which I don't agree with that, but because that's assuming that buyer's agents are all going to just work for a lot less money. And it's harder, in my opinion, it doesn't require more expertise to be a buyer's agent than a listing agent, but a lot of times it does require more time and energy, right? Meaning you might show somebody 30 houses, right? You might show somebody 30 houses on a buyer's agent. So I don't think that they're going to work for much less yeah. if they really want the representation that a good buyer's agent provides. Well, that's exactly what's going to happen. If the buyer is in fact going to be paying the commission, there's going to be a lot more due diligence now on the buyers, on who they choose to represent them, because let's face it. And um, that's good. And that's great. Let's that's great. Because let's just face, let's just face facts. Most buyers do not do due diligence on uh, the buyer's agents. They find the listing online, they like what they see, and they click, and somehow it lands on, you know, it goes to, to whoever picks up the phone. In most right. cases, it's not the listing agent, by the way, guys. It's not the listing agent that right. gets it. I would uh, say 95% of the times. Yeah, and especially if you're, they're finding it on third-party sites, it's very rare that um, you're getting the listing agent, right? Those that are savvy know to Google the address, and then, you know, after doing some search, you'll be able to find the listing agent directly. But let's right. assume that now buyers are responsible for, for, for hiring a buyer's agent and paying the commission. There's going to be a lot more due diligence, which I agree with that. I think that's good. It's good to be a listing agent. I say this, you list, you last. Your mm -hmm. goal is should always be a listing agent. I don't think listing agents are going to have any issue whatsoever. Um, I think business as usual, if anything, you know, I think there's just going to be um, a lot of people um, focusing more on, on creating inventory. I do think that. I think there's yeah. going to be a shift. I think that the buyer's More agents, people will work with sellers. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you know, it's interesting because they're saying, oh, the, the buyer's agent's going to go away. All these people are going to leave NAR, all these things. That. I don't think any of that's going to really happen. I agree with you. I don't either. People come and go from this industry all the time. That's right. Because the barrier of entry is pretty low, Very right? Low. You know, depending on the state, it's anywhere between 45 to 90 hours, I think, mm -hmm. across the country to be able to get your real estate license. And then it's about 2000 dollar startup cost, right? With business cards, MLS, dues, all that stuff. So, you know, the barrier of entry is low and the there's no there's no ceiling, right? You can make you know, five hundred thousand dollars, three hundred thousand dollars. It's not like you have to climb the ladder for forty years to be able to do that. The more houses you sell, the more money you make. Right. So it's a very attractive business to be in. There's a lot of work, right? Like you're working weekends, you're working evenings, you're you're putting in more than forty hours a week if you're making more than six figures. But the the point is that Everybody that's saying all these crazy things are going to happen, I disagree with. I think there's going to be small changes. I think NAR is going to appeal the lawsuit. Hopefully their attorneys do a little bit better of a job explaining, you know, why the the way that the industry works is it works, okay? Because buyers don't have to do that. Now, I do think that they should eliminate, and this is what I hope comes out of the lawsuit, 
um, anti-rebate law in those 10 states because then that opens up the door for the buyer's agents to have that conversation with their buyers and say, listen, you know, me and you are going to work together. Here's the agreement that we have, regardless of what the sellers are offering. This is our agreement. So if they're offering more, I'm going to give you a rebate back. Right. If we agreed to X percentage and the, the, the percentage offering is more, I'll give you that back. Mm -hmm. Isn't that fair? Mm -hmm. Right. No, and, and if it's yeah. and if it's less then you're making up the difference. But that's what my services are for. Right. And, you know, if if they go, well, I don't have the money to do that. It's the same exact thing as them saying, you know, hey, I'd love to buy this house, but I have enough money for the down payment. But I don't, I don't have the money for the for closing, closing costs. Cost, right. So what would you do in that case? You're rolling it in. You ask for a seller's concession. Mm -hmm. You say, hey, our offer is 510 for this home. You know, $10,000, the seller is agreeing to pay towards the closing costs for the buyer. Right. Well, what's different about this? There isn't anything. There's no difference, There's right? No difference. It, you know, if they're offering X and then your agreement with the buyer is a little bit more, so what? then, you know, they have to pay a little bit more, right? If they agreed to that and there's a contract and everybody understands it, that's the way it should be. And that would be great. But is that eliminating the buyer's agent? No, that's eliminating buyer's agents that don't know how to have a simple conversation about their value that's right. and their services. That's exactly and there's right. a ton that gets done on the buyer's side. That's right. So we're educating our agents, obviously, how to have that conversation. Now on the seller side, like back to what I was saying before, if I'm a flipper, I'm offering a commission out. And the way I'm deciding on the offering commission is what? What would I do? How would I decide how much off, how much of a commission to offer buyer's agent? What would you do? If we were selling our house, would we put it on the market? Of course. Okay. Why? Because I know that in order to get the best, best price, best terms, I need to have the exposure. Right. And then Buyers. would we on the seller side pay a commission yes. out to buyer's agent? Yes. Okay. And how would you identify how much you would offer? How? Well, I would base it on what the going rate in the area is for sure. That's right. So you one. would look at the MLS and right. say, okay, this what other what the, houses yeah. that are comparable to mine in yes. my geographic area yes. are offering? See, with me, I would probably want to offer out maybe even a bonus uh, or a little bit more to, right. just to be able to incentivize the buyer's agents to bring, you know, to bring their clients to us. Right. Especially so if there's other, here's the thing. If there's not a lot of homes on the market, if you don't have a lot of competition, then maybe I would think differently, but let's assume that within this price range, there's maybe, you know, a handful of homes mm -hmm. and I would look and I would say, okay, well, you know, what do I need to do to incentivize a buyer's agent? And I know that's going to be dollars, right? right. So I would probably offer out half a percent more just so that uh, I can capture... And it depends on the price of the home, too. That agent and those buyers. It depends on the price of the home, absolutely. Right. But we would look yeah. at the competition. We'd look I at... Would. Now, some people listening to this, right, they might be like, well, yeah, now it's kind of like you're incentivizing the buyer's agent to work for you, right? They would say, well, you're offering more money. It's kind of like you're saying, hey, sell this house. Don't worry about your client. You're going to get more money with this. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. So there's an argument to that. So th the way that it has to happen, in my opinion, is that every single MLS, right, are transparent about the commission mm -hmm. that's being offered, right? So buyers so buyer know. Can see. That way they can know like, oh, they're showing me this house because they're offering this. They're showing me this house because they're offering me this, right? Or they can make a decision for themselves like, oh, wait, that's good that they're offering more because I get a rebate. Right, because I have an agreement with my buyer's agent for X. That's a good point. And this is more money. No, that's a really good point because buyers don't. I mean, they see on the contract um, what the with what, what the, the buyers is. with the price and what the buyer's agent agent is getting. It's, it's written on the contract, right? Right. Um, but what they don't know is, you know, m they might have seen five other homes that they liked as well, and they don't know what that offering is. Right. right? So if they saw a house that was amazing and they're like, I love this house, but the buyer's right. agent's like, eh, this area, right. maybe they, maybe they incentivize them a little bit with their language and whatever to go to another house. And that probably happens. That absolutely happens. Right. That, that's reality. So transparency reality. is key. So hopefully what I'm, what I'm hoping that comes out of this lawsuit is that we have transparency across yes. the board. Mm -hmm. Like everybody knows, well, where's the commission? Because you know, and on all sides, right? Because if you're a for sale by owner, right? If I personally go after a for sale by owner and I call them and I want to buy that house, I know that they're saving money on commission already because they're not listing the house. So what automatically off my head am I doing? I'm, I'm subtracting. subtracting. I'm subtracting. I'm like, well, if I buy your house, there's no commission involved. Right. So like you're getting a better, 
you're you're getting a better deal with me. Yes, so but when, if I was a seller, I can counter that. I get. I, I would say yes, I understand. And because there's no commission involved, I'm asking this and not right. And you not could more. say, well, that's reflective I mean, of the price, right. but you can't help yourself but to think that right off that's the bat. That's exactly what people think, right? And that's one of the reasons that I think they get less. Okay. Aside from the fact of not being sophisticated, not exposing their house to the marketplace, et cetera. But everybody has that option. So people can't say that commissions aren't negotiable, especially in New Jersey. Now, are your buyer's agents having the conversation with the buyer? That's a different story. And that's what really has to happen. But do you really think, John, I mean, in our market, right? I'm talking about New Jersey. I'm talking about, you know, where we are. How many sellers are going to opt to offer nothing out? I just, I don't see it. I don't see it because, um, so and if, because let me tell you why I don't see it. Because if you are a good listing agent, if you're the top of the top, you know, it's your job to educate them. And if you do a good job doing that, I mean, it's logical. It makes total sense. I mean, right. we're, we're smart people. We're in the industry. Our own house, we would do it. Our own house. We would we offer would out a buyer's right. commission so you're not, as the seller. Right. So, so think about it. And I've had this, com by the way, I have had this conversation with a seller that asked me the exact same thing. What's going on? I hear these things like, should, should I offer okay, out Okay, but zero? wait, the, but wait, let me educate people that are listening to this, that are realtors on how to handle that, right? The way to handle that is if a seller brings it up and says, you know, what do you recommend? You're the expert, right? They're relying on you. But at the end of the day, you, you say, look, this is... This is how it works. Commissions are negotiable on both sides, right? For these type of services, this is what I charge on the listing side. Break it up. When somebody goes, hey, what are you charging commission? Don't give them the total number. Say for my services, the listing side of the services, this is what you pay for, right? And then we have the opportunity, right? If you so choose to offer a commission out to buyer's agents. Now let's look at the competition to see what it is that is happening so we can understand the marketplace right? And see. And if we price our house similar to the comparables in the marketplace, we also want to be comparable with the other factors, one of them being the commission, right? And that way we can, you know, make sure that the buyers understand that if they're buying this house, they can do that. Now, my number one thing that's the most important thing on why I would do the commission is because I want to set the commission on the seller side. Right. If if I'm paying for this commission, I want I'm probably going to pay for it anyway. Meaning if I put in a house on the market and I offer zero, I think the majority of the buyers are not going to be able to afford the down payment, the closing costs, right? The due diligence costs and all the expenses that they have plus the commission. I don't think that they're going to be able to afford it. But I don't think anything's going to change behaviorally because that's assuming that now they're going to represent themselves, which is crazy. Like how are they going to get into the house? Right. Right. If the listing agent is showing the house, well, then the listing agent is going to charge a commission for those services. I want to be able to set that commission, right? Nothing's going to change. If somebody goes on Zillow and they see a house, here's what really happens. So everybody watching, just understand this is what really happens 99% of the time, right? Is the buyer is calling the agent and saying, I want to see this house. If they have an agent and they saw a house, they're like, I'm telling you, I want to see this house. I saw this house in a neighborhood. I didn't tell you I wanted to see this neighborhood, but I saw it on Zillow. I was checking everything's out or on whatever platform they're on. I want to go see this house. So they're telling them, I want to go see this house. So it's not about how much commission is being offered on them going to see that house. And if they love that house, they're going to be like, I want to put an offer on this house. Right. And they could be offering zero. Right. Okay, so the buyers we're not in a world right. anymore where right. buyers agents are sitting behind their computer with a <laughs> this is the only exclusive list. Nobody can see it list, right? Like they used to. They had their all their properties in their binders a long time ago, and the world didn't know about those properties. That's right. So if this seller was offering two or three or four or five or whatever it is, they might say, well, I want to sell this one. So I'm going to show this one. Right. Well, that's not what happens. Now, buyers choose the houses that they want to go see. Right. They have it at their fingertips. So yes. it's not so much about the compensation anymore, right? Now it's more about, well, what does the buyer want, right? And having that conversation with the buyer agency exclusive is going to be key because if they're not offering anything, the buyer needs to get paid somehow, right? And what's going to happen 99% of the time because of the economics of every situation for most buyers, I'm not talking about like people with a lot of money that are buying cash, but for most buyers, what are they going to do? They're going to want 
that money rolled into the financing. So they're going to, even if I offer out nothing, they're still going to ask me for it. But now the buyer's agent can ask whatever they want and the commissions will be higher. Mark my words, because if I have an agreement, think about it. I'm working with Joe, right? And Joe's like, I want to buy a two family house. And I'm like, cool, Joe, listen, I'll do it for X percent. Me and you have an agreement, whether they offer zero or they offer more. If they offer more check or we get more, I'll give you a rebate. And he's like, cool. So now I go to put an offer and I go, Joe, me and you have this agreement, right? But let's ask for more. So then I can give you cash back at closing. Assumption, right? Just for example purposes, not talking about commissions, but just so everybody can understand. Me and him agree to X. Then I ask for more in the contract, but I'm giving, I have an agreement with him at the onset of our relationship. I'm giving you X percent back, right? So I have an agreement with him for less, right? I ask for more and I go, when we get it, you're going to get that back. So now the seller is going to end up paying more. And that's what people don't get. And then all, all that's going to happen is it's going to get rolled into the deal. And now they're getting cash back. And if it was X percent, they might get five, 10, 15, $20,000 back, depending on the price of the home. Mm -hmm. So now they're getting cash back at closing and that's paying for, for the movers, for sanding and refinishing the floors, the couch. whatever. So is that going to continue to push prices up? Is it yeah. still going to be baked into the deal? Yeah. People don't understand that it's Newton's law. It's his third law. What does he say? For every action. There's a reaction. There's a reaction. So by you changing the way things are done, it's there's going to be another change. I it's have, yeah. It's I, not just like one for one. Like oh well, you know now they're saying that all the commissions are going to go down. Really? Why would they go down? Yeah. That right. I don't agree with now that. are there going to be people that. that pop up and go, hey, we'll write up a contract for you for X? Of course. Yeah. Those those people have come. They've been and around gone. Yeah, they've come right. and they've gone right. and. That's because in the absence of value, right, mm -hmm. right, the, the the price doesn't matter, right? Like, yeah, the price is low. If there's no value there, of course they're going to pay less. I agree with everything you're saying, um, and I have a question for you. So, what's what's going to be with, what's going to happen with the disclosed dual agent? Yeah, because that's a great question. And in some states, they have disclosed dual agency. For right. those of you that don't understand, if I list a house, right, right now in New Jersey, we don't have designated agency. That means that there's a broker. I'm the broker of record at our brokerage at Signature Realty. All the agents under me are called sub agents, meaning that, you know, I'm basically responsible for that transaction, essentially, right? And I'm, you know, they're representing the brokerage as the sub agent. They're my listings that they take. So if they go to get a listing, it's my listing as the brokerage, right? They cannot do business on their own. But here's the problem with that. If if Amy lists a house and she's a sub agent, the brokerage is representing the seller, okay? And we have what's called disclosed dual agency. Now, if Michelle finds a buyer, right? She's under the same brokerage. So it's disclosed dual agency. Even though she's never met the seller, she doesn't know anything about the seller. She's might have shown five houses to her buyer. She's gotten to know her buyers. She loves her buyers. She wants to get her buyers the best deal possible, right? But she's in a disclosed dual agent situation, right? But that doesn't make sense because now she's responsible for representing at, through the broker, mm -hmm. the seller and the buyer, right. which doesn't really make sense because you've never even met the seller. Right. So in designated agency, which we don't have in New Jersey, it's... Agents within, right, a brokerage are allowed to represent the buyer and the seller independently. And that's the way it should be. I agree with that 100%. I don't know why they have disclosed dual agency in New Jersey or other states. I, I, I think designated that they should agency. move to designate. Because yeah. if I list with my, if I list a house for a seller, right now, this is how it works. It's crazy. I list a house for a seller, right? I go, hey, on the listing side, I charge X, right? And then I'm offering out a different commission, right? And I go to another seller, right? The house sells. Everything's good. I don't get the buyer. Everything's good. We paid them. I go to another seller. I go, Hey, we're going to list this. What do you want to offer out? And they go nothing. And I go, okay, so you want to offer nothing. Okay. Well, I'm not legally allowed in New Jersey to get paid from the seller and from the buyer. So if I get a buyer, even though I'm a disclosed dual agent, I'm not allowed to get paid twice. I can't get paid from the seller side and the buyer side, even though I'm doing twice the work, right? So I have to tell the seller, like, listen, one of two things can happen, right? If one, I could just, or one of three things can happen. One, I could just represent you, okay? And none of my agents, all 450 of them at my real estate office, right? Can't bring a buyer, right? Because if you're, if you're refusing to pay them a commission, right? If they put an offer on the house, they're going to have to ask you to pay for the commission, right? Why? Because it's illegal to get paid from both sides under one brokerage. 
in New Jersey. So in that case, okay, one, I could just be a seller's agent and really not promote it to my brokerage at all, which is hurting you because I have 400 something agents that have buyers, right? So that's one. I don't think that's a good option. One second is I'm a disclosed dual agent. We don't offer anything out, but me and you have a deal that if I, if I do bring a buyer, you're going to compensate me. And we have to talk about that now, right? So that's two. So now you're getting a commission for buyers, right? That's not listed on MLS because you're offering zero. And you have to internally tell all your agents at your company and communicate this message outside of the MLS that if they bring a buyer, it's not zero, it's X because we negotiated a special deal with the owner because we're not allowed to get paid from both sides. That's weird, right? And then, or number third, say, hey, I'm not representing you. Instead, our agency changes to transaction broker, right? Where there you can get paid from the seller and the buyer. Right? So it's either I have a transaction broker situation where I can get paid twice or it's a disclosed dual agent and then you offer me a compensation because I can't take it from the buyer. Right? I'm not allowed to do that. Okay, So in designated agency states, you are allowed to do that. You could list a property. right? They can offer zero out and then the buyer's commission can be paid to the buyer's agents in that office. And that's great. right? So disclosed dual agency is failing if anything changes in this lawsuit. It's just not going to work. I agree. Right? No, I agree. It's interesting. I mean, what's up? Everything, you know, the, 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 the real estate interest industry as a whole is just changing. And uh, there's going to be a lot of changes down the pipe. But at the end of the day, I don't think um, it's going to, we're not going to eliminate buyer's agents. No. I just, Why, how would you do that? Exactly. Plus, a lot of listing agents don't even work with buyers. Right. Right. They have a team. That's right. That work with buyers. Right. Right. They give all the buyers to them because they're focused on marketing listings. and selling and getting listings yeah. and, you know, doing the negotiations and home inspection credits and, you know, making, you know, being on top of that whole transaction. And then the buyers, right, they're out there showing houses. It's two totally different skills. Right. Some agents do both. Right. But it's two totally different skills. I agree. You know. All right. Wealth of knowledge, Jonathan. So Stein what's going to happen? Uh, what's going to happen in 2024? What do you think? I do believe that we're going to see more inventory. Uh, I think that the interest rates hopefully will come down. And I think when they do, um, you're going to start seeing more inventory for sure. Um, really? You think so? I think so. I think once interest rates, yeah, because a lot of people, what's holding people back right now um, is they want to sell their home, but they don't want to leave their two, 3% interest rate and go into six or seven. That That right. is the biggest um, obstacle that I'm facing right now. I can tell you that the majority of people that are moving happen to be people that um, don't have a mortgage on their home. Um, a lot of seniors that have been in their home for 30, 40, 50 years. Those are the ones right. that they don't want to go up the stairs anymore, yep. but they're stuck. Some yep. of them have their houses paid off, right? Well, that's... That's, that's, that's who's selling. That's who's selling. Um, so, you know, you have buyer people that do want to move, but where are they going? A, lack of inventory, and even if there is inventory, am I willing to buy this house for more money? And now it's going to cost me a lot more money, assuming that you're trading up, or even if you're, you know, if right. you're saying the same, um, you have... Um, you know, higher interest fees. And so yeah. that is the main reason that people aren't moving right now. They're just waiting to see what happens with the marketplace. But it's going to be 2024. I mean, we all have elections happening. We all know that right around the time of elections, the market, every, people get nervous. They people just put like, their... Let's see what happens. Let's see what happens. They put their home search on pause. Yeah. Um, but overall, I can tell you that I have been experiencing more listing opportunities than I've ever had uh, this, this year, this year has been a challenging year, um, uh, for everybody, uh, myself included. And, um, but I am starting to see, you know, more opportunities come up, more people wanting to put their home on the market. Um, a lot of people are actually leaving New Jersey. I'm seeing that as well. I'm seeing people moving out of state. Um, yeah, if, I mean, if they have a lot of, if they've experienced a lot of appreciation, which they yeah. have in Jersey and they sell their house, they get cash and they go somewhere else and they get a small mortgage at a higher rate. They're okay with that. They're yeah. And a lot, and, and then COVID has changed everything. Now right. a lot of businesses are virtual. They're moving virtual. And so they don't need to, to be right. here. So you're seeing that, um, you're seeing people that are trying to capitalize on, on their home right now and moving into rentals, uh, until, um, until more inventory, uh, comes up or interest rates come down. So that's what you're seeing right now in the marketplace. So my advice to you, uh, to the real estate agents out there is 
focus on sellers, continue to focus on sellers and try to create inventory. And again, I think that your ideal client right now should be people that have been in their home for that their houses are paid off. Yeah. Right. That have no mortgages and, or have been in their home for, you know, a longer, longer period of time. And they have so much appreciation that now is the time to sell because the market is still strong. We are still in a strong market, still a seller's market. Home values are still, um, there's a lot of pent up demand in buyers. Yeah. Like you saw interest rates go down half a percent, right? From mm-hmm. like 7.9 or 8 to 7.5. And, and what um, happened? Buyers some of the mortgage down. lenders that we're working with are yeah. pre-approving people even at like 7 and 6.875, right. right? Depending on the program, how much down payment, they put 40% down for the 6.875. So it depends on your financial situation, right? My, my, my predictions are a little bit different. I think that, I think for 2024, something you know, pretty weird is going to happen around the elections. I think this is probably the most important election of our entire life. And um, I I really hope another COVID type situation doesn't happen. But I feel like there's something that's going to happen in the sense that there's going to be something that we don't think about, right? So um, I think that the commercial real estate market is really going to affect the residential market. And I I don't really hear anybody talking about that, but I think what people don't realize is that a lot of the banks that lent money on this commercial real estate, they're going to take a lot of losses. And, you know, when they take those losses, you know, they're not, they're not going to, you know, it's not going to be good for the residential side of their lending business, right? Because they have all these losses on this side of the business and they're going to tighten their standards and their guidelines because they're going to have to be more liquid. So I think that's going to really affect us. Uh, I don't know, you know, rates will definitely come down if something, you know, kind of crazy happens, right? Because when something bad in the economy happens, um, even if it's not super bad, you know, the only tool that the Fed really has is to what? Put more money into the marketplace and lower, you know, the cost of money, which is lowering the rates. So if that happens, I feel like a lot of buyers are going to potentially jump into the market. Right. So if rates go down to 6%, right, all the people that were like, oh, I'm going to wait for it to come down before I buy. Well, what are they doing? They're buying. And I, I don't think that sellers are going to sell their homes. I still don't think that they're going to sell their home because, uh, you know, the overwhelming majority have under 6%. I think what they're going to do is they're going to refi. So I think mortgage brokers, they're going to tap into that equity and they're either going to get a second mortgage, right, and pull the equity out at 6% or they're going to refinance their whole mortgage you know, and pull out the cash to be able to do what they need to do on their houses. Now, it's not going to be everybody, but I think that a lot of people aren't accounting for that, right? If rates go down and people experience $200,000 in appreciation, they might not sell. They might just refi, right? And that's going to set them up, you know, for, you know, the future, maybe having a higher rate and a little bit higher of a monthly payment, which will, you know, trickle down to everything else and, you know, demand more money and higher wages and stuff like that. But I think that inflation is going to continue to rise and owning real estate is the best thing that you could do. Where would you rather have your money in the bank or in a piece of tangible piece of real estate, right? Especially investment properties and things like that. I think there's going to be a lot of commercial investment property opportunities coming up. And you're seeing that already. I am seeing that already. Right. And cap rates have changed, right? Or right. areas where cap rates, capitalization rates, your return on, on capital is, you know, they were trading at 5%. Now they're trading at six and a half, mm-hmm. 7%. So um, that is now an opportunity for people to take their money out of the stock market, right? Which is very questionable. Right and put their money into these commercial investment opportunities. So I think that there's going to be a lot of opportunity coming up. And I think it's, it's a positive thing, Mm -hmm. right? Regardless of what happens, it's always, there's always the bright side of things. It's a matter of how you look at things. It doesn't matter who's in office. It's what you're doing in your life. And I think what matters the most, it matters who's in office. I'm going to take that back, but you know, because big things change when different people are in office. But I think in the future, 2024, we're not going to see that big of a change uh, from a perspective of buyer sellers market. The absorption rate is so low, at least in our area, mm-hmm. right? We're at one and a half to two months Crazy. supply, yeah. right? So I, I do don't see that turning into a buyer's market when all this inventory is hitting the market. A lot of people are saying, oh my God, foreclosures have risen so much. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, they've risen a little bit, but it's nothing like the financial crisis. It's not even, right. it's such a small percentage of it that, you know, it's it's not going to be that big of a deal. 
Yeah, and honestly, I'm not scared of it. I think with every change, there's, a, there's an opportunity. With every change, there is opportunity, and we just need to embrace it. And we need right. to be in the right place at the right time. And you know, for those of you that are listening, and you're you know you're a real estate investor or you're a real estate broker, we have an upper hand, right? Because we have the pulse on the market, and we right. have the tools um, that we need to be able to again be at the right place in the right time. I know that we have a lot of changes in 2024, just within Signature Realty and J. So right. I just want you to talk a little bit about sure. um, the the big announcement that uh, that we just made yesterday. That you just made yesterday. Yep. Yeah, so our theme for 2024 is goal in. We're doubling down, we're tripling down on everything that we do at Signature Realty um, and really helping our agents win. So um, yesterday we just launched our um, rev share program and our new commission model. So previously we had a 50-50 a commission split with a $10,000 cap, which was super competitive, right? Once you've finished paying $10,000 to the company, you are on a 100% commission. That's what cap means, right? Because you're capped out on how much money you paid to the company. Well, what we found is that people want different options, right? Not everybody wants to be on a 50-50 split, even though they're paying a little bit of money, not a lot of money to the brokerage. So what we did was we decided to um, have, you know, we've been working on this for a year, it's very difficult to set up. We've had to hire developers and everybody to help us p create a platform and a system to be able to track all this stuff. And basically what we're doing is we're doing three commission options, 60, 40, 70, 30, 80, 20, with a 10, 15, and a 20K cap. But the big difference is the revenue shares, right? Mm -hmm. So on the 60, 40 with a 10K cap. And it's a revenue share, not a profit share. Right. So you so actually make the difference. Yeah. You're going to make money on every transaction on anybody that you bring into the company. So basically you're, you're participating in all the revenue share of the business, which is amazing because now, right. You know, regardless of the profit of the organization, whether it's X amount of dollars or X, right. That doesn't affect how much money you're making, right. which is important because I think, you know, there's some models out there that are profit share models. And then, you know, the owners of the company just pay themselves a huge salary and there's no profit left. Right. And then, you know, everybody that participated in profit share doesn't make any profit. Mm -hmm. Plus, like real estate is not a good time to own stocks. Like don't own real estate stocks. Why? I mean, not financial advice, but, you know, just look at their history. Look at every major public real estate company and see what they've done over the last five years. Right. They're not doing good. Every single one of them are way down. Right. I'm talking big time. Yep. And now they're all getting sued. Mm -hmm. So what is that going to do? That's more legal expenses on their, you know, expense sheet, which is going to take away from their profit. It's also going to take away from their focus. Right. So I don't think that's a good idea. Right. First of all, um, you know, you can argue me, argue with me on that, you know, if you're planning on holding it forever and whatever. But, you know, that's important for everybody to understand. And number two, you know, revenue share in our models is very simple. Right. It's not like some of these other models that are very, very complicated to understand. So basically, you know, if somebody's selling a house and they're making, you know, X amount of dollars, whatever amount of money comes to Signature Realty based on their split, um, every transaction, you get 10% for every person that you bring in, right? So if somebody sells a $600,000 house, right? And they make a, I don't know, well, let's say somebody sells a house and they make a $15,000 commission, right? And they're on the 60, 40 plan, right? The first level plan, which we call the, um, the silver plan. So we have the 60, 40 plan, 60% 60 goes to the agent, right? They get 60%, signature gets 40%. Right, so 40% of that $15,000. So that's $6,000 that Signature gets, we will revenue share with that. That's revenue, that's $6,000 that we get. We give 10% to the agent that recruited them. Right, so that's on your first level. Right, so if you're in the 60-40 plan, on every person that you bring in, you make 10% of the company dollar. So that maxes out at $1,000 per year because they're on a $10,000 cap. Right, 10% of 10,000 is 1,000. And then if they're on the second level, which is um, 70, 30 plan. the gold plan, the mm -hmm. 70, 30 plan, they get five levels. What does that mean? Five levels deep. Five levels deep. So if they recruit one person, right, they make 10% on them. But then if the person that they recruited, they recruit somebody, right, they make 10% on that person. Right. And if that person recruits somebody, they get 10 percent on that person. Right. And that goes all the way down to five levels deep. So if you recruit, let's say five, we call it the five, three, one plan. If we recruit, if you recruit personally five people, you'll make money on all of them. Depending on the plan that they're in, you're going to make 10 percent of whatever it is that the company made on them. Right. So if somebody picks the 80, 20 model and they capped at 20 grand, you would make two thousand dollars on that person. Right. So assuming a few of them did, you know, 80, 20, a couple of them did 60, 40 and a couple and, and another one did the 70, 30 plan. You'd make about six, uh, eight thousand dollars in revenue share off your first level. 
But now let's say they each recruited three people. Now you have 15 more people on top of the five that you had. So now you have 20 people that you're making money on and you make 10% on all of those people too. But the person under you makes 10% on the people that they recruited, but so do you. And it doesn't change. You always get 10% of the revenue amount all the way down five levels. So, you know, we call it the 531 plan. Five agents, right? You recruit, they each recruit three each. Which is easy to do. It's, it's easy to, to do, do, especially with this plan. Right. And then those three that the second level recruit, they each recruit one. Right. Right. And then down the levels, they each recruit one each. Well, guess what? That's a $98,000 revenue share if they all cap. Right. They're not all going to cap. Right. But sometimes they're going to recruit more people than three or one. Right. right? So that's a $98,000 potential revenue income per year mm -hmm. as long as those people stay with the company and you stay with the company. Mm -hmm. Right. So that's the five level. And then we have the last one, which is the 80 20. It's eight levels deep, which is amazing. My which is plan. even more. This is great. Right. I mean, you're, you're making a tremendous amount of money and we are not requiring people to hit any sort of, you know, um, qualifiers right. in order to open up all the levels. Like some of our competitors that have revenue share, they make it very difficult for them to actually profit off the work that they did. Mm -hmm. Right. And off the work that other people that they brought in did. So if I recruit one person and that person recruits a hundred people, right. And then that those hundred people recruit a bunch of people, you're getting paid on all of them. As long as you're in that plan for that levels, that much levels down. And the reason I wanted to do this is because I feel like there's, there's no retirement plan. That's right. Yep. Right. For independent contractors, yep. they have to take, they're as good as their last transaction. Ah, you're stealing my line. You know, they are, they're as good as their last transaction. And you know, this is a way for you to build the business with us mm -hmm. and revenue share all the way through. And we've made it willable, right? So you can actually leave this income revenue stream for your kids, for your spouse, if you ever pass and away and you can build that legacy. And right. in real estate, if you take an analogy of real estate, right? The other day I did the math. If you buy a, a $400,000 house, right? You put $100,000 down and you have two units, right? You bought, not that you can really find a two family for 400 grand, but let's say you did and you rented each one of them out for $2,000 each. You would make on uh, today's interest rates with a hundred thousand dollar down payment on a four hundred thousand dollar house, a three hundred thousand dollar mortgage, with t you know with the property taxes estimated at eleven grand for a two family and insurance at around three thousand dollars, you would make after paying your mortgage and all your expenses, you would make three hundred bucks. So you would make thirty six hundred dollars on the hundred thousand dollar cash investment, right per year. Only thirty six hundred dollars. Right. So you would need a million dollars in invested cash to make thirty six hundred dollars a year. With us, you just have to recruit a few agents and you don't have to put up any money. And you don't have to even recruit because we're not, I'm not a recruiter. I've never recruited anybody in my life. Right. I've you don't have to recruit. To You're right. We don't have to recruit. All you have to say is, hey, check out what we're doing. Check out Signature. We're going to be putting on, this another uh, exciting thing that we're doing in 2024. We're going to be putting on a lot of live events right. so that people can come and see and experience the difference of what we're doing. And all you have to do is just invite them. Right. Just invite them. Hey, you know, we're, we're going over the top 33 strategies, uh, you know, uh, top 33 strategies to get more business in 2024. You should go to that event if you're interested mm -hmm. in growing your business. Yeah. And then they come and they see, and we give a ton of value and they're like, wow, yeah. you know, I'm not getting this at the current brokerage that I'm at. Right. So then they, and then they look at a revenue opportunity and they're like, mm -hmm. Oh my God, you know, we don't have this over here and this is way better. Let me come over. And then you start making money just from, basically recommending people to our brokerage. It's incredible. I'm so excited. Yeah, me and too. I know you've been working on this for such a long time and I think it is probably the best um, Hands structure down. In, in the country. I, I've never heard of. of There's no rev share with three options like this with exactly. no qualifiers. And not only that, you know, for our signature realty agents, um, for everybody that they bring on in 2024, right? That basically they invited to learn about the opportunity. If they come on board for every agent that they get, we're going to match it with one of our recruits. That's incredible. Right. No so that. if they have That's five, incredible. we're going to give them another five. So it's going to be pretty fantastic. I'm excited about it. And 2024, we're going all in. That's our theme. That's our theme. And Beba, I recruited you. So what does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't do a whole lot of production, so, you know. Um, we're excited, and um, and we're going to be a lot more involved. So now that we are currently not filming, um, there's going. we're just going to be a lot more involved in the business. Um, yeah. You know, agents on Signature are going to have direct access access to me, which um, up until now, it's, to it's, both been, of us. Uh, it's been more, you know, of, of, of people in place of the operations and Mike Gomes and, and you guys. But now I, I'm, I'm going to be a lot more involved. Um, we hired... Um, 
rehired uh, Nino. Um, she was with us years ago, right? Yeah. Before it all started. Actually, she, before it all started, she kind of came in at the very early stages when um, we you probably and I like just got together. Yeah. Right? We were like 30, 30 uh, Yeah, very few in. agents, yeah. And she went away, and then she flew back. <laughs> and now we're, what, 500 agents deep, so we're excited to have her back. She is, you know, if you're starting to see a lot more involvement in the social media and with the podcast and um, just with the videos and everything else that you're seeing, that's all um, because of her of her efforts. So um, we're just excited. We, we have, I feel like now, babe, like it, all the pieces of the puzzle are, are, in. are in and they're all aligned like right. we, we were missing a couple of pieces but i feel like now we we have it all 100%. we have a tremendous um um support team behind us we have me and you as leaders that are both going to be very actively involved you know we have our marketing we have um um i mean we just we have we have it all now we have this revenue uh share program we have offices that were you know more offices that were opening up and by the way we're going against what everyone else is doing everyone's going virtual everyone's closing down offices we're going the opposite it actually reminds me of 2009 when real estate companies were shutting down offices and you were opening and up. i was opening <laughs> up so i kind of history is repeating itself a little bit but on a much grander scale um right. we believe in brick and mortar i know i do i love having I mean, imagine being a real estate company without owning any real estate. Yeah. Imagine being a real estate right. company without yeah. having yeah. a place for your agents to actually do real estate and right. meet clients. Like yeah. that to me is just, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make any right? sense. And it's not just, and I've said this from day one, when I opened up Signature, I said, I don't want Signature to be a regular brokerage. So I, I came up with the tagline, it's not just a brokerage or, or it's, it's a lifestyle. And that's mm -hmm. exactly what we're doing. All of our offices, it, it is going to feel like a lifestyle. It's not just a real estate office. It's going to be a place that um, you can come, you can, you know, you can have your, your coffee at the Signature Cafe or Signature Sip um, uh, that we're doing. And, you know, we're going to have a media area. We're going to have retail shops. We're going to have showrooms. It's just going to be such a cool environment. It's going to be an experience. And that is um, what we're all about. We are planning on opening up a office in every county in New Jersey. That is our goal. We are not closing. We are actually going the opposite way. And our goal and our vision for Signature Realty is not to be the largest brokerage. It's to be the best. And we are on our and way. And to be focused on just New Jersey. Yes. We're a New Jersey-based brokerage. Local, we want to have hyper-local local, local, education local. and training and information mm -hmm. to everybody. You know, these you know, some of these other companies, they're nationwide. Real estate's local, right? right? What do they say about real estate? Location, 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 location. And that's what it's all about. So thank you guys for visiting us. Um, if you're watching this before um, the holidays, happy holidays. Uh, we wish you the best and, you know, crush it in 2024 because it's going to be a great year and you should copy our theme. Go all in and whatever you're doing, whatever you want to do, you know, everything that you've been thinking about doing, put in the chips on the table and make it happen because uh, that's what it takes. Go all in. Talk to you soon.